While originally meant for middle school, Ned Bigby and his two best friends did the impossible, create a guide to help us survive life. Ned Bigby, that's me, and my two best friends try to do the impossible. Create a guide that will help you survive school. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Ned's Declassified tips that are actually helpful. For this list, we'll be highlighting some of the tips from the classic Nickelodeon sitcom that are helpful not just in middle school, but also in high school, college, real life, etc. Be warned, just like in the show, the results may vary. And also, a light spoiler warning for most of the series episodes is now in effect. Oh, Nettie, you need to be more like me and not care. I need your help! Ah, oh, ah. Okay! All right, we'll fix this thing before you turn into one of those freaky, stressy people. Number 10, stay together with electives. It's the first day of school and the series, and Ned and Cookie are forced to face their worst nightmare, not sharing a class together. Jump in together? <laughs> no! Unfortunately, the education system and life obstacles will try to separate you from your best friends, though it may not actually be that big a deal later on. Thankfully, as always, Ned has just the tip for this. Plan ahead and find another reason to get together at least once. These could include sharing the same elective class or even weekly monthly meetup plans. And remember, the middle school system will separate you from your best friends. But you can use your electives to stay together at least once. Plan ahead, pick the same class. Premeditating is actually helpful for any situation. With enough forward thinking and strategizing, you can safely steer yourself out of any crisis no matter how big or small it really is. Elective! Art class together! Me, you, and... Moles! Number 9. Have fun, don't have super high expectations, and go with the flow. Guys, it's a dance. Just have fun. During the school dance, Ned only has one thing on his mind, getting to dance with his crush, Susie Crabgrass. Susie broke up with Seth. I'm gonna dance with her tonight. Unfortunately, he ends up spending more than half of the event waiting for a chance to sweep Susie off her feet, which is easier said than done. And now it's time for me to dance with Susie, and I'm using the real direct approach. Things don't always go as we planned, and if we spend most of the time worrying about it, we'll just make ourselves miserable. Thankfully, Moe's had the right idea from the very start. Whether at a dance or with life, don't let yourself become disappointed by high expectations and instead learn to adapt and have fun. Hey, Ned, I came up with a new tip for the guide. <sighs> don't waste your whole night chasing a dream when you could have fun dancing with friends. You can't always get what you want, but you can make the most out of any situation. Have fun. Don't have super high expectations and go with the flow. It's a dance, so dance. Number eight, if you're failing, don't overreact. I got an F. Hold that thought. Okay, go. When Moe's gets her very first F, she starts taking desperate measures to make sure it doesn't happen again. She starts dedicating all of her free time to studying and cutting out spending time with her friends, volleyball, and personal hygiene. Didn't you wear this outfit yesterday? Yeah, but by eliminating wardrobe decisions, I've created 45 minutes more study time per week. Failing is definitely discouraging, but it's not the end of the world. It's just a part of life, and freaking out over one failure won't do you any good. If you fail, it only means that you need to learn from your mistakes and try something new. Also remember, while good grades and getting a leg up in the world are important, they're not worth ruining your life and blocking out everything and everyone you care about. Failing. It happens to everyone, and it means you're only human. So remember, don't overreact, and don't let one F ruin your life. Number seven, don't be afraid to say no. And here comes the boy who says yes to everybody. While giving tips about dealing with bad habits, Ned ends up showing us what his own habit is. He has trouble saying no to people. Sometimes people have a bad habit. Big B, can you pump up all the balls in the gym for the sports clinic? Sure. And they don't even know it. Ned, we're sending out flyers for this spring fundraiser. Can you help with the envelopes? Okay. It's easy to see where he's coming from. A lot of us don't want to let people down by refusing to help. It's important to help others, but if you keep saying yes to everything, you could end up spreading yourself so thin that you'll only let them down more than if you just turn them away. You need to know your limitations and not be afraid to say no when you're already overscheduled. And when you're feeling less stressed, you'll have the energy and time to start helping out again. Hey, Ned, great news. I'm building a new cement school Rotway. Can you help? 
No. Okay, no problem. See ya. Number six, don't kiss up, do the work. And then there's the evil teacher whose goal is to destroy you, teacher. Mr. Bigby, looking forward to seeing you today. <laughs> Mr. Sweeney has a reputation for being one of the hardest teachers at Polk Middle School. However, at the end of the day, he just wants to see his students reach their full potential, especially a certain smart but lazy Ned Bigby. Mr. Bigby, can't you even pretend to be interested? That's actually something a lot of us need to remember. Even if our teachers, bosses, or superiors are a little harsh, they are still people at the end of the day, and they just want to see us succeed, or at least try our best. Don't try to weasel out of something by being a teacher's pet. Just put actual effort into your work and show them that you care about what they teach you. I know it doesn't feel like it, but teachers are people too. And if you do the work, or at least try in class, you'll be amazed at how much your grades shoot up. Number five, don't believe rumors and don't spread them. Whether as kids or adults, we all have a few tall tales we like to tell. They could be as simple as whispers about two people supposedly dating, or they could be completely insane, such as urban legends about an atomic flush. Atomic flush? What's that? You know, if you flush every toilet in school at exactly the same time, it creates such intense septic pressure that boom, the whole school hops into the air! These might seem like harmless little stories at first, but the more a rumor spreads, the more people are likely to believe it and the more out of control it becomes. And someone could even get hurt if it escalates too much. That's crazy, Liz Mosley. What? When it comes to rumors, the best thing you can do is not spread them and don't believe them unless there's enough evidence to back them up. Rumors. Sometimes they're fun, but usually they are nothing but trouble. So don't believe them and don't spread them. Though some might have more evidence than we know. I'm ready if you are. Bring it on. Number four, stuck on a project? Take a break. And I still have that writer's block thing and I need some tips. <laughs> One of the most frustrating things to ever happen to a creator is writer's block. When your brain becomes so cluttered that you can't think straight and or you can't find the right words, it might sound counterproductive to walk away from a project for a short while, but it's actually more helpful than you think. If you're stuck on something, trying to force yourself to complete it won't do you any good. It won't feel as passionate and it will just feel like a chore. Sometimes we all need to stop and smell the daisies to clear our heads and really get the creative juices flowing. Now, if you're ever stuck on a project and can't get started, try taking a ride or walk away from it for a while. An inspiration will come. Number three, you do what you love even if it hurts. Ned never really understood art and yet he ends up being dubbed an artist after accidentally painting a naked orange woman in class. Hey, what do you think of my abstract art? Who knows what it is, but who cares? That's a naked lady. What? At first, it seems like it's more trouble than it's worth. What with Ned constantly getting harassed and berated for his controversial piece. Are you the artist? Why orange? Why not a naked dude? However, he learns at the end that everything anyone is passionate about is an art in some way, and sometimes the things we're enthusiastic about can cause a bit of pain. However, no matter how much it hurts, you just need to keep those passions burning no matter the consequences. Because face it, without something inspirational or passionate, life would get boring pretty fast. And I learned that art is more important than you think. It's all around us and without it, life and school would be pretty boring. Number two, structured procrastination. Wow. Big project, but I'm getting started right away. No, you're not. You're gonna procrastinate like you usually do and then panic at the last minute. Ned has a procrastination problem, which puts his upcoming class report in jeopardy. We can't blame him. A lot of people put off doing big, scary assignments. However, believe it or not, there is a way to use your procrastination to your advantage. The main trick is breaking down the bigger project into smaller, more manageable mini projects and working your way up from the easy, fun tasks to the more difficult jobs. Remember, keep working. Every small task you accomplish helps to motivate you. 
and it laid the groundwork for getting that scary, overwhelming project done. It may not seem like it at first, but every small task you complete helps. And once you learn to manage your time properly, the project becomes less of a chore and that much easier to finish, as long as you keep working. But next time, don't procrastinate. Sorry, Mr. Wright. I I think I learned my lesson. Okay, but how is it that these are super helpful for a fully grown adult also? These are pro tips, you guys. Here are some other awesome and practical tips before we get to number one, which seriously, I think of all the time. You've gotta get rid of clutter in your backpack and walker once a week. If you have a distracting teacher, as in something about them makes it hard to concentrate, just keep your eyes on your notebook. It'll keep your mind on your work where it belongs. Backpack Boy's outfit says I'm ready to dance. And note the appropriate evening backpack. Few things in school are more important than finding out if someone likes you. Here are some tips on how to get the answer. The first is just ask. It's what I call the direct approach. And if you want a new do, get it two weeks early. This will give it a chance to grow in. The last minute mom job might give you an unwanted nickname for life. Hey, it's Coconut Head. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, practice, practice, practice. Taking the number one spot is one of Ned's most recurring tips, or a variation thereof. There will always come a time when you find yourself face to face with a difficult challenge, whether it's learning something new, trying out for a team, or just trudging through life. Hey, if you don't make the team like me, you can't give up. Just practice, get better, maybe taller, and make it next time. Nobody gets it right the first time, but the only real way to get better at anything is to keep practicing. Come on, my grandma's better than you! <sighs> to avoid choking, you need confidence. And the best way to build confidence is practice. It may seem long and tedious, but all the effort you put into polishing your craft will definitely show over time. This is one of the best uses of Ned's Guide, to give people the tools to survive anything that comes their way, and only by practicing these tips will life be easier to handle. There's nothing wrong with practicing a smile, especially if you're uncomfortable posing. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.